Welcome back participants. Today in this course of natural resources management, we will be discussing about a very, very important topic and that is participatory rural appraisal and rapid rural appraisal. These two technologies are often used for various exercises mainly which are carried out at the field level. Now, to understand the natural resource base and its uses and how it can be managed, the best way that you can understand this is through PRA and RRA. Now, today I will be discussing this, this topic in great detail. So, let us now try to understand what these two terminologies actually mean. From the name itself participatory rural appraisal, you can understand that there will be participation of people community and rapid rural appraisal as it says rapid. So, you will actually do carry out this exercise in a very rapid manner. So, the objective of these two different techniques are different. So, when the objective or the purpose says are different, certainly the methodology or approaches will also be different. Now, if you look at PRA, PRA is a methodology which often used for interacting with rural communities, understanding and learning from them. It is a two way process and in this technique, you actually as a person who is going to carry out this exercise would actually allow the community or the participant in this exercise of equal partnership. Then only PRA or participatory rural appraisal exercise will be a successful one. Remember that this technique, it is a combination of approaches, methods which actually enable the rural people or the communities to share, to enhance and also analyze their knowledge for what? to plan, act, monitor and also evaluate the natural resources and its various aspect. So, friends as you understand that PRA is a very, very kind of if we can say a democratic process where people will be given full freedom to interact and share and this is a process through which there will be capacity building also of the participants. And also enhancement of the knowledge base of the people who are actually carrying out this exercise along with the community. Now, let us come to the other one which is rapid rural appraisal. Now, rapid rural appraisal is a semi structured kind of activity. Here you want to have information very, very quickly. You do not want a very detailed base of information and this activity generally carried out in the field by a multidisciplinary kind of team and mainly it is designed to get new information very quickly. If you look back and think about your any kind of past field exercise or activity, you will find that basically most of us have been doing rapid rural appraisal, not the PRA because most of us go to the field and carry out the information and quickly come back to our respective you know labs, offices, institutions, organizations. So, as per the methodology we can say that that is a rapid rural appraisal and RRA is consists of a series of techniques for quick and we call dirty research that can generate quick results of less precisions but greater evidential value. So, two things once again participatory rural appraisal, it is a relatively lengthy process where people play a very important role, democratic in nature, gives freedom to the participants to participate and share knowledge. RRA very fast when you, you have suppose you do not need a very detailed kind of case studies or information, you go there and finish it and come back and try to come out with say quick analysis, then RRA is the tool that we should use. Now, let us talk about one by one in greater detail. When we look at rapid rural appraisal RRA, 
This approach actually started as a social science approach that emerged around 1970s. The basic idea was to quickly collect, analyze and evaluate information for rural conditions and local knowledge. This technique is a more extractive and eliciting type of approach in which the main objective is the data collection by outsiders. Means if we go to a village and try to you know assess the natural resources. I am taking the example of natural resources because this course is on that. But you can carry out PRA for any other you know aspect. Okay, maybe for you know water irrigation status, maybe for uh, livelihood. So you can carry out any kind of these things. So it's a kind of a extractive approach. The main objective is collection of data by us from the outside of that particular locality. The information which we generate through RRA on the basis of some predetermined methods or tools or questions which actually help us to generate quick answer. And as I said in the previous slide that RRA is a kind of a semi structured. So you do not have very well structured questions, well structured you know anticipated questions even. So thus the key principle behind RRA or rapid rural appraisal is the visualization of questions and results by using locally comprehensive symbols. What does that we mean? Locally comprehensive symbol means suppose in an area, the, the area that you are actually working or visiting or have gone to carry out this analysis, you have to find out that in that particular area, what are the things and how people actually communicate in their daily life. Remember that a small symbol of picture actually speaks much more than couple of words or line. And in the field of you know communication in especially in the rural sector, the symbol or the a picture speaks more than you know anything else. So here we can also use some comprehensive symbols because that will be a quicker way to get information from the people of that particular area. So the research methods are adjusted and modified fitting to the rural community need prior to the visit of their community. What does that mean? In RRA, so we will actually decide that how and what are the information we are going to take. Whereas in case of PRA, we go almost open minded because we have more time in case of PR exercise. So we leave it to also some of the situational you know information generation. So in case of PRA, we will not have exactly questions and also anticipated answer. There we will be more common and we will give lot of you know freedom to the community participants to think and answer the questions. Here in case of RRA, we do not have that legacy. In case of RRA, you review mostly the secondary sources of data, photographs, you know statistical data, aerial observations. We also go for direct observation, foot tangent interviews with key informants, maybe one or two. Remember, you do not have much time for RRA. Then you go for quick ranking and scoring timeline, short simple questionnaires and then rapid report writing in the field itself and sometime we can come back to our basis and finish the report. Now what are the uses of this kind of technique like rapid rural appraisal? Now if you look at whenever we carry out any projects, whatever size of the project would be, generally it goes through some phases. And those phases are as mentioned here. First is your pre-project phase. What we do? We conduct several RRAs in an area that is new to us and we try to you know understand or get a sense of the issues that need to be addressed because on the basis of that report actually you are going to recommend some policies or some interventions that will help that particular area or community. Now so in pre-project stage you will try to do some kind of you know information or a kind of a sense of that area and how and what are the things that area might be needing for their development. Once you get that kind of sense a feeling at the pre-project phase 
then you go for project design. In project design phase, you ensure that the project is appropriate to the reality, ground reality, okay, where actually you know you will be working. So, it is a critical stage, but project design as I said will depend largely on also your pre-project phase information base or sense that you get from an area. Then we come to the next phase early project intervention. In case of RRAs early in the project can help the project further refine its objective. In some cases we call it mid level corrections or mid project corrections. So, you will have some kind of opportunity to correct your actions or processes during the early project intervention. In some cases, you know these appraisals will logically lead into PRA. From RRA, you will actually lead to PRA because which is actually a larger way or technique of doing appraisal of any area. Next comes to your meet project phase. As the project moves on, you know people or the staff in that project may like to choose a few members from the communities in which they go almost daily basis and you know interact with them. To assist the effectiveness of the approach that you have taken, you need to talk with these people and find out that with how they feel till now that you whatever project work has been carried out. So, this kind of information is very very helpful to make your project a successful one. All right. So, once you find that yes, whatever you are doing, it is going in the right track, finally you reach to the end of the project. So, at the end of the project, you had to carry out an evaluation which can be carried out by your team and also an external expert. So, which actually will include a SWAT analysis of your RRA. So, strength, weakness, opportunity and threats. So, a SWOT analysis of your project completions will give you an idea that how this particular project has been carried out or any kind of weaknesses are still there that can be actually addressed in future. So, this is how RRA takes place. Now, come to the PRA which is a larger way or it is a detailed way of appraisal of any aspect here we are taking the example of natural resources. So, 1970 RRA concept uh, you know has come and the concept of PRA was first developed in Kenya in 80s, 1980s in close collaborations with you know non-government organizations based there and also of course, there are various other grassroot level organization. So, as I said that it is a method used by most of the researchers who actually want to plan their work in close collaboration with the people, with the community. So, this is very very important that close collaboration with a community that is the key of PRA and the difference between RRA and PRA. So, PRA it not only improves the researchers informations regarding you know certain issue of the community, but also it improves the interaction, the exchanges that takes place between you and the community. So, that means PRA is a process where both the outsider means the evaluator or, or the persons who have gone into the village like, like you and me going into a village to carry out a PRA exercise. So, in that process we as well as the community learn and enhance their knowledge base is a fan very fantastic way of participatory learning. And the USP and the USP of this PRA exercise is that it allows kind of a ownership among the people, a joint planning of different projects, different experiments are you know built in in the system. So, what happens is that even if after couple of years when the project period is over, the community will carry it forward. Because during PRA exercise together you and community could able to generate a sort of ownership among the community. And that is very very important especially in the field of natural resources management. Because certainly we being outsider we cannot be there 
for all the time. So we are there on a project base to enhance the capacity, generate the, the natural resource management uh, pathways, but that has to be carried forward by the community because they are the people, they have to live there. So that is the USP of, of participatory rural appraisal that it uses a joint planning and it creates a ownership because that also establish you know the sustainability of any project, any intervention that you or government or anyone outside that community try to bring in. Another aspect is the participation of rural communities in the entire planning process and executing the research tends, tends to increase the relevance of any intervention or relevance of any results and the chances of achieving successful outcomes get much more enhanced because participations of community into planning and implementation certainly will ensure the continuity of that particular aspect and that means it will ensure the sustainability of that particular intervention. It is also useful PRA when research is aimed or targeted to you know resource poor farmers. Even within a community we have <coughs> different kind, different uh, level of farmers. One group of farmers could be landless laborer, they have nothing. So they are working as a labor. You may have mid level farmers who have little bit of resources but they can think of sustainability and all those things. For them fulfilling their you know hunger is the first objective. But there will be another group of farmers who are relatively assured of their you know food or food secured. So they can all think little bit of you know conservation and others. So see you need to think about this you know dynamics within that community. So, as I said that it is specially useful when, when the research is, is aimed to help the resource poor farmers, especially working under ecologically and economically very vulnerable region because those are the people who will run out of resources very quickly. They may not have their own resources, even if some resources are available in the common pool that also will get over. So, the target, the most important target of this entire exercise will be to those resource poor farmers because they need the most of management of these natural resources in and around their area. So we move to the, the word participation. I have been reiterating this particular word participation, participatory. So this particular word participation in participatory rural appraisal is used in three contexts. What are those? A cosmetic level means whatever is proposed looks good, is a kind of a good feeling, good you know participations is a good feeling. So it can be used as a cosmetic level. Donor agencies and governments require participatory approaches, you know consultant managements to win the crowd. That is a real fact. So when you actually talk about participatory approach, donor agency they feel good because they are one of the agendas of providing fund to any organization is that this their fund will reach to the maximum number of people. They are fund to be utilized by a larger community. So that is their focus. So they get happy when you use any word like participatory participations. What is the second context? A co-opting practice. Co-opting practice for what? To mobilize labor and reduce cost. What does that mean? Suppose that in a village, you went inside a village and found that water is an issue. There is not much water available there. Probably they get you know only 10 days or 12 days of rain in the entire year. So that means water management is an issue. So in that case after your PR exercise if you identify water management is one of the issue and one of the solution is pond development or creation of tank in southern part of our country they call it tanks. So now to dig or to create a pond or tank you need labor. Now co-opting practice is that when you actually able to convince through PR exercise that this is yours 
this is this going to be this pond going to help you. So, this is your thing. So, you voluntarily give some labor for creation of this tank or pond and they do it, they give it freely. I can tell you uh, with my own experience in at the field level. What are the other one? Communities contribute their time and efforts to self-help projects with some outside assistance like we going into them, they, we will provide them certain suppose tractor or maybe we will provide or we will tell them through some remote sensing technology using remote sensing tool that this is the area where you can actually have a pond looking at various slopes. So, that kind of technical help we can provide them, but the labor will come from them voluntarily. What is the third context of using participation? What an empowering process means when you actually welcome the participation of the communities and the people, it enables the local people to do their own analysis, to think about their own need, to think about the solutions to certain problems in their area, to take the control in their hand and thus enhance their confidence. These all in turn will lead to sustainability of that particular initiative. So, see how critical is participatory rural appraisal for even a project implementation and its sustainability, all right. Now, I am sure that by now you have understood that where RRA is a little bit of top down approach, first PRA is a bottom up approach where you give more you know freedom to the people, people comes in join you and then together you develop something for their, their village. So, it is a bottom up paradigm which implies that a transfer of power from top people, institution, disciplines which actually allow the bottom means the community people and institution and disciplines to take participate in the planning exercise. Okay? So, its inception is greatly dependent on the recognition of the fact that many agency development agencies have failed in attempts to impose standard top down programs and projects on diverse local realities or need where they do not fit or meet the needs ultimately it leads to what waste of resources money all right. So, what we need it is a shift from data collection to data sharing and empowerment It's very very important. So, our psychology through PRA it actually allow us to think from mere data collections to data sharing and empowerment, a common knowledge sharing platform that is what PRA provides to the community and to the people who go actually to carry out this exercise for the benefit of that community. It is also PRA is a you know shift from things means objects to people. So, that means it gives more value to the people rather than the things around. It is also a shift from extractive survey questionnaires to experience sharing by local people, where communities are already trying their best or effectively manage their natural resources by utilizing or applying their indigenous knowledge. So, that means PRA unlike RRA is not just looking for data, data, data. It is not a very extractive kind of process rather it is a sharing between us outsiders and the community. So, you understand that how beautiful is this concept or this process of PRA participatory rural appraisal for natural resource management. It is very, very important not only for as I am repeating time and again not only for natural resource management, but for any aspect where you do work or think or plan something for the people. Now, let us look at the unique features of PRA. See, PRA is a iterative process and as we discussed, it happens in the community, with the community, by the community, for the community. It is informal in nature and that is one other strength of PRA. Because when you interact with people, if you become too formal, no, the community, especially rural community will not be you know forthcoming. 
they may not be able to share their knowledge their experience with you and that would ultimately lead a failure of your project because you have gone there to help them not you okay and it's a interactive process of course it has to be innovative as well in nature all right so that means it is iterative it's with community informal interactive and innovative in nature so these are you know the five very unique features of participatory rural appraisal now uh, some of the advantages of participatory rural appraisal obviously when it is you know participatory in nature it encourages or enhances empowerment there is a sense of mutual respect it's there of course localization very very important then overall enjoyment while working actually as a team you enjoy the entire process and while you enjoy the process obviously the outcome will be also good is not it so finally inclusiveness where you are inclusive not only gender wise but also caste religion economic status wise so in a sense that in every manner this technique has the advantage of inclusiveness all right but is everything is good certainly like any methodology or any approaches this also has certain disadvantages and i personally feel that it is important to know the disadvantages rather than the advantages because then you can actually strengthen your process now the term pra it itself is a difficulty it is at times not rural and not participatory very important statement though we are calling participatory rural appraisal but in reality sometime you might find that it is neither rural in some cases it is not participatory there are also risk of hijacking formalism disappointment threats how hijacking means suppose you have 50 people community villagers sitting there there may be one or two person who are the representatives of suppose the local political leader or panchayat leader or maybe they have or they may be also the representative of some private agencies or companies you never know there are a lot of villagers in a village and many of them are involved with many other people organization interest so they may sit there in inside the hall or the meeting place where you are carrying out the peer exercise with some already predetermined agenda so it could happen suppose that majority of the villagers are asking for suppose irrigation okay suppose sprinkler irrigation they are telling that uh, considering you know our crops and other type of cultivation practices sprinkler irrigation will be good but one person if he belongs to a, an outsider company person or whoever who sells or has a business on pump he will say that no 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 ground water we have very good amount of ground water sprinkler will be very costly who will manage who will maintain so he will try to push or take or hijack the agenda of that pr exercise or meeting formalism like the people who like us who go from outside if we become too formal then certainly the the purpose of the pr exercise somehow get defeated and that could lead to disappointment sometime what happen is that uh, if you are carrying out a pr exercise in a very sensitive area you may even get sometime threats also because you are dealing with natural resources natural resources means it has lot of you know relationships with money mining costly trees medicinal plants so these all are related with huge amount of business money so these are certain thing but the major shortcomings or problems with pra is that it is difficult to find the right team combination of team and the right set of questions and that is why it is important that uh, for a pra exercise to carry out a kind of a pre survey visit also in an area to understand better that area then it also has issue with focusing 
on the wrong target individuals and vested interest on both side, both party. So, that is another danger that uh, you might you know ultimately get attracted or get trapped with this wrong person and their interest or probably even the outsider like we going there might also sometime you know uh, get misled by certain aspects. Then going too quickly and focusing on part of the problem and hence not getting the full picture. Suppose you are discussing somebody has generated an issue, mentioned about an issue and you gone deep into that. So, you may lose lot of time and energy for that instead of finding out the overall picture of that area. Then often in PRA you can get misled by myths and gossip. I am sure that most of you are aware of various type of myths and gossips in our rural areas and the strong belief believe on on those things so when you go there there is a you know high probability that that your exercise might get influenced by those kind of myths and gossip then lack of people and social skills also can lead to professionalism of course that you have to take care as a pra team there will be because you are dealing with people who has no professional background in this exercise. So, there is a chance assuming that a community is homogeneous could be a big mistake, huge mistake and overlapping the you know differences in their culture, their, their caste, income, socioeconomic status. So, this is often a big problem that considering your entire community sitting in front of you that you are interacting with during the peer exercise as a homogeneous society. We should never do that. Okay? Then there is uh, also uh, resistance to allow local communities to determine the research agenda and giving them professional recognition is sometime is an issue. Because uh, when you these people the community are with you and together you are carry out a exercise I think that ethically we must give equal recognition. So, determining the research agenda and little bit of professional credits in fact will allow you or anyone who go for PR exercise to have any number of future visits to you can ensure your future visit as well. But if you forget to recognize their contribution, there is a chance that next time when you try to go that village, you might find some resistance or people may not be interested. So, now we will uh, discuss about the different types of PRA methods. Just now we have you know uh, discussed about the advantages and, and also importantly that disadvantages of PRA exercise. Now, what are the different types of uh, PRA that we can actually carry out? First is space related method, second time related and third relational methods. Now, within space related methods, what are the different methods that actually we can carry out under PRA? Social and resource map very important participatory modeling method, mobility map, services and opportunities map, transact or we call transact work, participatory census methods. I will discuss each one of them separately in the upcoming classes. Next is time related method. In time related method, we go for timelines, trend analysis, historical transact, seasonal diagram. In relational methods, we go for cause and effect, network diagram, process map, well-being ranking means how much wealth if a particular household has, health wise also their status. Then Venn diagram all of you are aware of, pair wise ranking, matrix ranking, pie chart, livelihood analysis, spire diagram, body mapping. So, there are various techniques under each one of these three methods, three type of PRA and we will be going through each one of them at a time. Now, what is seasonal calendar? Seasonal calendar basically we try to examine in the PRA exercise through seasonal calendar to understand the seasonal patterns of various you know incidents of crops, pests or animal diseases, rainfall 
expenditure of household, farm labor requirement. So all those things we can find out or analyze through seasonal calendar. In India, unlike Europe or United States or other country, in India our seasons, four seasons are very very clearly demarcated. So according to those seasons we have also different types of crops. Now to maintain those things you definitely need different types of inputs, different types of labor. So seasonal calendar helps in that. When diagramming? It reveals the importance, relevance and involvement of local as well as external institutions in doing the entire exercise of PRA in agricultural issues, in case of natural resources availability and its management, all those aspects will come. Then timelines and trends. Timelines and trends, it enable analysis for a particular aspect, any aspect change over time. Suppose you have availability of raw material, suppose mustard, one particular village, suppose they grow lot of mustard. So mustard it will go for ultimately as mustard oil preparation or mustard as a you know uh, raw mustards also will be used in any Indian houses. Now depending of the seasons and depending upon the year wise productions you will get a trend or timelines of suppose a master production in a village. Similar way you can also find the trend for different varieties grown and extent of soil erosion, probably even appearance of drought or flood in areas. Matrix scoring, it helps to examine people criteria for choosing a particular option among a basket of options. Suppose irrigation I have talked about, there are four or five different types of irrigation pond irrigation, surface water irrigation, then uh, sprinkler irrigation, ground water. So if you give to them these choices, then which one of those things according to them, they actually uh, you know give scoring that also can help you in ranking of your priorities. Resource and agroecological zone mapping, very important. It helps mapping the areas with similar type or characteristics of soil type, crop type, land type and land tenure type as well. Then you have uh, causal on impact diagramming. In causal and impact diagramming, what you do? It shows the flow, the causal relationships and other such connections such as expected impact of irrigation on soil erosion. Okay? So in case of causal and impact, you will find in one hand the reason of a particular event taking place in that area. On the other hand, you will find what are the impacts this particular event, say erosion or flood, flood in Assam. So what is the impact on the people, on the natural resources, availability of crops, soil, etc. Then farm mapping and flow diagramming, what does it do? It maps the individual farm plots and their location in relation to each other. So it also examines the different soil management practices in different plot. In India as you know that within a small village you may have small, 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 small plot. One person growing one crop, the other person growing another crop, two different type of soil management practices, etc, etc. So farm mapping and flow diagramming, it helps you to map all those details. Finally, transject works. Transject works across the field actually help you to understand suppose this is a field so transject work is that we will go like this way and then this way this way this way go here and this way so means crisscross walking across the field to understand learn about the locality the crops the people the soil types the resources you know where is the school where is the water all those information if there is a pond how far it is from household so these all actually helps you to plan your exercise for future planning. Now comparison between PRA and RRA already by now you all will be knowing that what are the differences. Both these methods fall in the qualitative side of the research spectrum, okay? qualitative side. They are not suited for gathering statistics and precise numerical information. Okay? What they could do best to gather information about 
in orders of magnitude as for example, vast majority of population does x rice farming suppose rather than we cannot tell exactly the percentage. Okay. Then we can talk about trends while only a small proportion of the population grows x. It is important to realize that this number is increasing. So, in a sense you instead of giving very clear cut data in case of these exercises you will come out with relatively you know qualitative information. Qualitative information that helps us understand the reasons that why vast majority of people in a community are actually uh, doing something instead of doing the other thing. So, their choice of or their decision on certain aspect why they have taken that decision this exercise will help us to know. PRA and RRA in terms of participatory methods how they can be compared on the participatory dimension both RRA and PRA can be applied in a ways that are more or less participatory, but as I said RRA does not involve community in that way the PRA does it. PRA in which community members take full control of the process, but in case of RRA the control is with the external parties. In case of RRA there is generally little expectation that community will be in charge of the process which we have already discussed. So, basically this slide shows the differences between PRA and RRA. Now, the common principle between these two techniques is very important for us to know. For PRA and RRA the common principles are offsetting biases because that is one of the challenges that we face in this kind of exercise. Rapid and progressive learning both sensitize and give respect for gender sensitivity, focused learning in both cases it accept diversity and differences, optimum ignorance because it is important also for this kind of exercise you know not to know something. If you find that everybody is knowing everything then there is something wrong. So, optimal amount of ignorance is also important and triangulation of data positive attitude. These are few common principles that we find in case of both PRA and RRA. Now, this particular slide I like the most because this chart out you know activity purpose wise all aspect wise how RRA works and how PRA works. So, purpose inform project design baseline information in a first uh, mode team, team composed of villagers and all those communities here you need a mostly expert team, limited number of representative sites here communities and sites will be higher, discrete study usually lasting 5 to 7 days this will be a very ongoing a long term process, tools and techniques range of tools and techniques like uh, that I have mentioned already more or less the number of tools used here is very less here will be more and then documentation comprehensive succinct well written report for RRA and captures the complexity of the information. Here you will have village logbook with notes, principal findings, activities, community action plan, expectation of villagers etcetera etcetera in a very detailed manner in case of PRA. So, that is all for, for today and uh, we will you know look forward to the next class. Mm -hmm.